Hi everyone and welcome to Mr Twig's Maths. Now I want to explore all of the things that we've been learning about in the past couple of weeks around the number six. For the lesson you will need um, something to write on, something to write with and some counters. Those, as we've said before, something to write on if you can't find any clean paper just like the inside of a box or something, you know, an old cardboard box, whatever, as long as it's something that you can write on. So that's what you'll need. So go and get those now, press pause, get the things that you need. Okay, guys, right, well, let's get our brains into gear and let's uh, start by singing a song. It always makes my brain work better. Let's sing the song about Alice the Camel. Now, in this song, Alice is going to start off having five hands. So, if you like me, you can show it on your hands, that's fine. Let's see if you can join in with the singing. Alice the Camel's got five humps. Alice the Camel's got five humps. Alice the Camel's got five humps. So, go, Alice, go, boom, boom, boom. Alice the Camel's got four humps. Alice the Camel's got four humps. Alice the camel's got four humps, so go, Alice, go, bom, bom, bom. Alice the camel's got three humps, Alice the camel's got three humps, Alice the camel's got three humps, so go, Alice, go, bom, bom, bom. Alice the camel's got two humps, Alice the camel's got two humps, Alice the camel's got two humps, so go, Alice, go, bom, bom, bom. Alice the camel's got one hump. Alice the camel's got one hump. Alice the camel's got one hump. So go, Alice, go, boom, boom, boom. Alice the camel's got no humps. Alice the camel's got no humps. Alice the camel's got no humps because Alice is a horse. Yeah. So um, at the end, why does it say that Alice is a horse? That's right, she doesn't have a hump, not like camels. What a silly song, but I love that song. Okay, so in our lesson today, we're going to be exploring counting and representing objects to six by thinking about the skills that we've been learning. First thing I want to think about is all the different words. So we've talked about cardinality. Cardinality was that our stopping number when we're counting shows how many there are in that group. We've also talked about conservation of number, which is where it doesn't matter how your counters are set out, there will always be that number if none are added and none are taken away. So I can say, for example, here I have one, two, three, four, sorry, one, two, three, four dinosaurs, no matter how we arrange them, there will always be the same number of dinosaurs. None have been taken away, none have been added back in. We also talked about subitizing, which is recognising num numbers or small numbers by the just by their patterns. We did quite a lot of talking about that with dice. So for example, if I see this now, I know that's four because it looks like the four on the dice. I could do the same with um, with two. I could do the same with, well, all the numbers on, any number really, all the numbers on the dice. Three. Obviously, two and one, there's limited choices. Let's just remind us how it might look with bigger numbers. So I've got three there. I'm going to add two more in. So three, one more makes four, one more makes five. We can arrange them as on the dice, we're subitizing them. Okay, but we can also arrange them in many different ways, but whatever we do, there are always five. And let's just reinforce that by showing you about the cardinality, which shows the stopping number is the total in the group. Count with me, please. One, two, three, four, five. There are five objects altogether because my stopping number is a five. Okay, then the other thing we talked about was using the word numeral. Numeral, what it, what it means is the way we record a, num a, a number. So I've just been doing some counting and we've got one, two, 
three objects all together, I can record that by writing the numeral three. What numeral do I need to write now? Let's have a count. One, two, three, four, five. I need to write number five. Okay. And especially if I set this out easily like this, you can probably see straight away, because of the way I've subitized my counters, that the numeral to represent them would be this one, number six. Okay, so that numeral is the way that we represent a number. Now, I want to start off by using quite a lot of counters, really. Because I want us to start off by making some steps, like making step patterns. So I'm going to use dinosaurs because they're in front of me. So I'm going to put one, there you go, one there. I'm going to put two here. How many do you think comes next? That's right. One, two, three. Okay. How many do I need now? Four, that's right. So one, two, three, four. How many do I need here? One, two, three, four, five. I'll be back. Dinosaur, come on. Ah, fell off, the, fell off the table. Fell off the table. I know you fell off the table. Well, stop it. Okay, stay there. So, I've made steps with a, a step of one, a step of two. This step has one, two, three. This step has one, two, three, four objects all together. This one has one, two, three, four, five objects. What would come here? Six, that's right. How do you know? Yeah, that's it. I've put the numbers in order. So one, two, three, four, five. This one would be the sixth. Now, have a go with your counters and seeing, see if you can make them into steps and see if you can make this last step, the one that I've missed out. Okay, so... Do, do that now. Pause the video. Do that now. Come back and we'll talk about what we've done. Have you made something that looks like this? So, this column's got one object all together. This, object, this column has two objects in it all together. This column has three objects. This column has four objects. This column has five objects. And how many in this column? That's right. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six objects all together in this column. Okay, I'm going to tip the screen so you can see me again. Thank you, there we go. Because what I want us to do now is to keep this on the table and this is when you'll need your paper or something to write on and something to write with. So I'm going to use my whiteboard. Let me just get everything I need over here. Because what I want you to do is to make a number track. Let me remind you. We can make the numbers one, the numerals one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now this is a track, so I'm going to see how else I can rec represent my dinosaur steps, in my case, my steps on here. So maybe what I could do is look at this and I can see I have I have one dinosaur, so I can represent it by putting a dot here. I'm going to represent these under here by putting Two dots. How am I going to represent these? Well, that's right. One, two, three. I'd like you to do this with your adults. See if you can continue it all the way up to number six. 
No. Here I come again. Hello. So I found I represented uh, my dinosaurs using dots. You could do anything you want. You could draw the dinosaurs. Go and do it now. Maybe when you're counting, get in, using use those words when you're comparing, like more and less, fewer, uh, greater than, less than. Okay. See how you go. Cheers then, guys. Bye-bye.